So welcome. Lower, to lower left corner of your screen. There, thank you. So welcome to Advanced Toastmasters Online. We are, um, this is some online meeting tips. Please use a headset or earbuds if you have them. Um, please mute your mic when you're not speaking. That's on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, you can also toggle your video on and off if you need to, maybe you're, you need to cough or something or you don't want anybody to see, you can just toggle your video off, but we want to see you, so try to keep it on. Um, the next thing is if you'd like to adjust your view, how you see the screen, you can click at the upper right hand corner that says speaker view if you would like to only see the speaker and then it'll toggle back and forth from gallery view to speaker view and you can do that up at the top. If you would like to ask questions or give notes to the speakers, you could do that via this chat button and you can individually send them based on their name. You can look on online on our screen, see what our name is, send us an individual message, uh, or you can send a general one, but please only do that in between the speeches and in between the sections, the parts of the meeting. This meeting will be recorded. It's our policy that by participating in our meeting that you agree that you will be recorded and the recording will be available publicly on YouTube and, and on our website. However, if you do not want it recorded for whatever reason, you can ask for your part of the meeting to be omitted and I can edit that out. I have done that before. It's, it's a little time consuming, but I can do that. It's easy for me to do. Um, if you'd like to join our club, go to ato.toastmost.org and just click on this link where it says become a member and it'll give you all the different information about the fees, our forms and everything are online on this website, ato.toastmost.org. And this is Advanced Toastmasters Online. At this time, I'm gonna put the gavel down and say, I hand this meeting over to our Toastmasters, which is Toastmaster of the Day, which is myself. And I'm going to read our mission of our club. We are an advanced Toastmaster club, which supports Maverick leaders to have more impact by providing advanced feedback on leadership skills and discovering what it means to be an out of the box, innovative leader. And at this time, our theme of the day is risk taking. So I'm going to stop sharing our screen right now and say welcome everyone. <laughs> and if you haven't already received our agenda, I will copy it again and put it in for everybody. You can look in the chat box and see that agenda. You can click on it and view our agenda for the day. Our meeting theme is risk taking and I, have been a risk taker all my life <laughs> and I look forward to today's meeting and hearing how other people might have manifest risk taking in their lives and I know that all of our speakers will have just a little bit of risk taking in their uh, presentation our table topics will also be uh, full of that our all the online meetings will have or our online meeting has three portions. First is our speech portion, then we do our table topics, and then we'll do our evaluations. So at this time, I'm going to introduce our first speaker. And our first speaker is, just give me a second. Our first speaker, speaker is Lori. And she's going to be doing her icebreaker. Her title is My Life Journey. Today, Lori will present from Project One, the icebreaker from her 10th CC manual. She will share about her life's journey to become the powerful woman that she is today. The timing for her speech is five to seven minutes. So please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster, Lori Whitmore. Thank you, Dawn, Madam Toastmaster. <clears throat> the journey of my life 
fits very, very well with risk taking. I have been a risk taker my entire life. I am the oldest of four children and my parents are Holocaust survivors, both of them. So I was raised in a family where we fight hard for what we want. We take risks for better success in life. My father coming to this country with literally not even a shirt on his back and became a very, very successful businessman set a model for me for whatever we set our mind to, we can become in our lives. And as a young child, my dad even said to me, if I want to be the first woman president of the United States, I could. So there were no limits set for me. And I learned to live a big life as a result. I married very young my, to my ex-husband, not to Rick, when I was 23 and I became a mother at a young age and had two home births, which was not even the first set of risks that I took, but certainly it was more common for women to give birth in hospitals at that time. But I was looking for an amazing experience. I was looking for a life-changing experience and wanted to be completely conscious, completely aware, and I will admit, completely in control of everything in the process. <laughs> Even if it meant putting up with some mm, discomfort, labor pain, so to speak, yes, it was quite uncomfortable but it was the most rewarding experience of my entire life. And I feel that having a home birth helped me set a reference point for what it takes to be not just 97% focused, not just 99% focused, but 100% of my attention in the moment to get through moment to moment to moment until I gave birth. And I learned how much strength I have as a woman that when I thought I couldn't go on any further, when I just was completely exhausted, when I felt I couldn't take any more, more needed to happen and I found the source within me to just persevere and continue. And having done this at age, well, age 24, it became a reference point for me later in life as challenges came up that if I could do that, if I could give birth at home and summon up what was necessary, I could do anything. And I have had my set of challenges that I had to face. I left my marriage when my son was nine months old and my daughter was three and a half. I made a mistake on who I married and I decided to cut my losses early. And that last I'd noticed, I'd only given birth to two children, but I felt like I was raising three children. So I divorced the third child, my ex-husband. And that was not an easy thing to do with two young kids there was a quote or a phrase really that my father shared with me back then that gave me some inner strength. And then there was a quote after that that inspired me and I wanna share both of them with you. And they're related to risk taking and my journey. So the first one is a phrase in Hebrew and it's a little, it's like a little rhyme. Mishanem makom, mishanem mazal. Makom means your place or your attitude. When you change your place, you change your luck. Mazal is luck, like when we say mazal tov. So what that means to me, what my father showed me was that if I'm willing to embrace change, leave my marriage with young children, I was living actually in a log cabin in the woods of Maine, rejoining society in you know normal way of living but making that change would change the outcome of my life 
Mishanem Makom, Mishanem Mazal. And it certainly has created more opportunities, lots of good luck. Uh, took me another 25 years before I met Rick, or before I married Rick, actually. No, I met him 15 years later and held out on him for 10 years before I agreed to get married again. But yes, I was able to remarry. And another quote that's related to risk taking that has been an inspiration in my life to embrace change and be the powerful woman that I am is small change in strategic places creates dramatic results. The thing about that that's so inspiring for me is that people are often afraid of change, even Pathways is a good example. Not every change requires such a drastic change. We don't, we are, we can approach change in baby steps. So finding the strategic place to make that small change, to have that dramatic outcome, that's the key of how to embrace change in life and have it lead to more and more and more successful outcomes. So leaving my marriage when I needed to, way back when, deciding to go back to college after having two children and getting my degree, moving to the Boston area from Maine, all those things were small changes I made that were very strategic leading to today. And one other thing I wanted to mention when I did leave my marriage, I took an assertiveness training workshop. In that workshop, I learned rather than being a submissive woman that was a people pleaser, to be more assertive. And I can thankfully tell you I have been assertive ever since and continue to. And that's what has led to the powerful woman I am today, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Lori, for sharing your story with us. <laughs> I really appreciate learning more about you every time you speak. And at this time, I'm going to introduce Bethany Boring, our second speaker of the day. Bethany is the creator of Step Out and Thrive Ministries, a safe place for both in-person and on-person um, online for survivors to discover who they are outside of their circumstances. But today, Bethany will be sharing how to grow a club membership, both on and offline. Please help me welcome Bethany Boring. Hello, everyone. Um, it's so great to be here. And you guys have an amazing club. I'm just having so much fun doing this. <laughs> so Don, can you let me know what my timing parameters are? Because I want to uh, five to seven minutes if you in, unless um you really need to do the nope. full that would be great i could do that five to seven minutes would be great yeah let me put it on my i have a timer on this side to make sure <laughs> okay super and our uh, timer will be up there as well two <laughs> Okay, well, I am going to, we did this last night, and I think I know the way to do this now, so I'm going to begin slide share. Cross your fingers. I tested this out. Can you all see? Yes? No? Yes? Okay, good. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I was waiting for a verbal. Awesome. Okay, and I'm going to push play. So one of the things we always do in Toastmasters is we are encouraged to speak. We are encouraged to be leaders. We are encouraged to do so many things. And a lot of times what we fail to admit is that we don't have the training to actually go out there and tell others and share with others what we're so excited about here in Toastmasters. We are here in Advanced Toastmasters Online. This is your club. This is the place where you feel accepted. This is the place that you feel like you can grow. Something is different about this place than you found anywhere else that you come to. Perhaps your Toastmasters journey began when you were younger. 
you know, maybe fresh out of college. Perhaps you've been in Toastmasters so long that you might be on your, what was that I heard, 10th confident communicator? That's awesome. We don't know where you are or possibly you're just joining today. Wherever you are, there's something different about this place and we have to make sure that we have the tools to share what is so successful about our club. This is a great quote. Let us share the benefits we have gained for ourselves with others. Dr. Ralph Smedley. We're supposed to do that, right? We're supposed to be able to share with others, but let's face it, a lot of times for Toastmasters, we don't know how to do that. So before I get into all, because I think if you've been in Toastmasters long enough, every speech that we do out of these advanced series have what Toastmasters has, the bullet points. But what I really want to stop here and highlight today is that the very first thing you should ever do when you're trying to really share with other people is you should know your story. I'm looking right across the screen right now at a bunch of amazing faces, and I don't know your story. I have no idea what brought you here. I have no idea how it felt for the very first time you ever delivered a speech. I have no idea what your journey looks like. And that, you know, is the very thing that gets people, that gets hearts, that gives speeches into your club. So how do you do that? Well, this is what I want you to do. And yes, we're going to do a little bit of application. And yes, reminder, I can't see you on the other side. This is what I'd like you to do. At this moment, grab a piece of paper, and I'm looking, grab a piece of paper or a pen, because I want you to do something for me. You don't have, you might not even see me again after this. It's okay. Just humor me for the moment, and get out a pen and paper. Hopefully, you have one nearby. At the very top of that paper, I want you to write my Toastmaster story. Three simple words. You can underline it if you want. Number one step, where were you before Toastmasters? So for some of you, that's going to be a while back to think, okay? But some of you all can think about where that was right now. Where were you before Toastmasters? Were you fresh out of college? Were you presented by a boss that said, hey, I need you to do Toastmasters because you need to learn how to speak? What did that look like? Write down a couple words if you can think about that right now. Number two, what did Toastmasters do for you? Okay? You... Go back to that very first moment that you walked into your first Toastmasters meeting. Go into that very moment that you delivered your first speech. Go into that very first moment when you realize there was something special about advanced Toastmasters online. There was something there that you could be a part of, that you felt seen, and that you felt like you could grow. Write down that part for number two. And number three is because of Toastmasters, I've been able to fill in the blank. What is it? For me personally, I've been able to speak and I can be myself. How awesome is that? <laughs> I have so much energy <clears throat> and that's a good thing. I've learned that's very good with speaking and Toastmasters was the very first part that really told me I had a story to share. What has Toastmasters done for you? What has Advanced Toastmasters Online done for you? Now go back home while well, you're at home right now, possibly, but go back tonight, relook at these bullet points and squeeze it into a one to two minute talk that you could talk to someone about. Because here's the thing, I could list so many things on the screen and all of these are great points, but nobody really cares about what you have until they know the heart behind your Toastmasters journey and you need to be able to share. Mm -hmm. So here's some awesome, great things that I'm going to fly through real quick for your journey as well. There's all these things that you could do. You know your story. Toastmasters membership, pin, t-shirt, and I call swag. And here's the deal. If you haven't been on the website lately, which you probably have if you went and started your Pathways journey, there was a $12 t-shirt on there. Just saying, I might have possibly kind of sort of ordered it. <clears throat> Very good. Also, you've got you, uh, your Toastmasters magazine, and you can actually read the articles. I know, some people don't, but I like to. You can also distribute promotional brochures and flyers. Here's the thing, for online clubs, what's really good about this, guys, is that being online, you can give a link right to the website, right in your email footer. It's great, right? We all have that accessibility to be able to do that. Another thing you can do is conduct a speech craft workshop. That can also be done online. And you can create an account on social media networking website. You can post about this on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. What, how cool would that be if you stopped right now? Not that you should do that. If you stopped right now and did a selfie and you posted it, hey, I'm at a Toastmasters meeting. And people are going to be like, how are you at a Toastmasters meeting? That doesn't make any sense. Explain to them what ATO is to you. 
And this last slide is basically what you need to do with guests. You guys did a great job with me today. Don called me out. Thank you, Don, and welcomed me as soon as I came in. I don't know how you guys treat your guests normally, but anytime you can private message them, chat with them, follow up, make them feel seen, heard, and accepted. That's the three things that are really important there. And then make sure you speak with the guest afterwards. And also make sure you ask the guests to visit again, which you guys have done that. So always keep the clubs, membership efforts, personal, helpful, and friendly. The big thing I want you guys to walk away with today is know your Toastmasters story. So I hope some of this helped out with you guys. I don't know the last time they were able to put your story on paper, but I hope that helped you all. I'm glad to be here. And back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Bethany. Another dynamic speech. And thank you so much for your energy and enthusiasm uh, and inviting us to share our story. The next portion of our meeting is going to be the table topics. And Patricia is our table topics master today. So at this time, I'm going to hand the meeting over to Patricia, who is in Limerick, Ireland, to have her do our table topics portion of the meeting. Please help me welcome Patricia. All right. Thank you very much, Dawn. And will you let me know when time is up to hand control back to you? All right. The first table topic. I'm going to pick Aaron. When was the last time you tried something new? Aaron? Yep. So, dear fellow, yes. most distinguished guests, when is the last time that I have tried something new? I definitely try a lot of things. I innovate a lot of the things. Back when it's the site of weakness. Dawn also see me creating crazy stuff. When is the last time? That's the question. I wasted the first 20 seconds. How? The first, the last thing that I actually tried for most innovative stuff will be pathways. Especially spending three months intoxifying myself in doing pathways. I've become the first person that finished pathways in Region 13. But it took me so long, so crazily investigating all different types of path. I was wondering why am I wasting my time? But when you have finished trying new things, there is a moment of silence. The moment of silence whereby you have reached the end of the road and you have nowhere to go. You simply do not know what to do next after pathways. But think about it. You have actually one thing left to do. In Toastmasters, what is our key mission or vote motto? Where leaders are made. Strive and create a new path for the other people to follow. You are the leader in everyone's life. Try to do it and innovate their life to the maximum potential. And that's why I'm still here looking young, although I'm sure that every lady here is only 18 years old and I'm like more than 60 years old. But I'm sure that there's always something new there. There's always something new to try, crazily, whatever it is. Just be yourself. Think about the elements that makes you you. Think about the things that you can make a difference. And finally, don't stop there. Pause and reflect. Learn from the past mistakes and then try to make it better next time. So my path is not ended after I finish my pathways. Although if I finish 10 paths, I have to wait for the new updates from TI. But that's it. That's how it goes for making something new and the last thing to try is only just three months ago. Back to you. Are we timing? Thank you, Aaron. Are we timing these? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. I didn't, I didn't see any timing cards. So I, I, I counted from my heart. <laughs> Alex, are you still okay? I just did the message. I'm a boss, so I go to the speaker and see it. Yes, good. So Alex is leaving a message in the chat box, and I once I see that, I'll, I'll add the colors. So thank you. Okay, the so next topic. Alex, do you believe in risk-taking?
Uh-huh. Do you believe? Okay, okay, I got it. So Alex, so can you let us see your mouth so we can try to see your whole face while you're speaking? <laughs> we want to see your handsome face, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> so, so can you see me now? Okay. Uh, can you see me now? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, so I, I okay, so this is over. I think I, I believe the breathtaking, the breathtaking, because I think that the, 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 the breathtaking is really help me to learn to go a lot as a, as a challenger, like help me to go forward. So I think that we still can to learn something from the internet, even though we have difficulties, even though we have a lot of struggle, we have to face, and then we have a lot of hardship we need to deal with, but as long as we we just go with the flow. We just don't. We, we just take time to understand the problem, and and we and we and we and then we learn, learn how to deal with it. And then we, of course, we know how to. And there's new challenge. We know how to. Fit. And there's new challenge. We know how to deal with it. And so we can grow as a people. We can learn a lot. So I think as a result, I think the the risk taking is really help people to learn more, to grow as a person, to grow as an app. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, Alex. Okay, my next table topic, which is worse? I'm going to ask Pamela, which is worse, failing or never trying? Failing is not bad. Failing is a good thing. So never trying is way worse. Taking risks requires the willingness to have something not work. It, you're probably entering into territory, at least I do when I'm taking risks, I'm entering into unknown territory. So I just have to have a lot of trust and faith that things are gonna work out somehow or I'll learn something in the process. And even if the outcome doesn't happen the expected way, I will still have the opportunity to learn something or have experimented with something, tried it, learned what I liked or didn't like about it, what I needed to do differently. So risk taking always requires, to me, the possibility of being willing to fail and not make it a negative thing. I don't think failing is a negative thing. I think it's a learning experience. So I'm all for taking risks, trying something new, doesn't work out, doesn't mean it's bad, doesn't mean I failed, it just means it didn't work out the way I thought it might and I learned something in the process. So thank you, Madam, Madam Table Topics Master Patricia. Thank you, Pamela. And Dawn, what is your most daring risk? <laughs> you know, that's I, I tend to be a risk taker by nature, which means that things that I don't think are very risky, other people look at, at in horror. But personally, I think the thing that that has been the the riskiest thing, like the most the most challenging thing, is kind of being in a relationship and being married for twenty years I and mean, taking a risk to. Um, commit to somebody for a, a very long time and risking the the ups and downs of that it's it's quite it's exhilarating it's um i'd like to say fascinating and at the same time it's still one of the riskiest things that i do i mean when you're partnered with somebody who uh can bring the best out of you. I think that that's very risky because then you sh share your heart openly with somebody else and they get to see all of you, like the good, bad, and the ugly. <laughs> so back to you, Patricia. Thank you, Dawn. All right, my next table topic is for Tim. What is your number one goal that you want to achieve this year? Uh, 
Hello, Madam Toastmaster. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 My number one goal to achieve this year was actually to achieve uh, my distinguished Toastmaster after nine, after nine years. And uh, recently, on, um, in January, I achieved that, that mark. And I think that is uh, not an end, but as a beginning of a wonderful journey. Uh, because I now be able to discover myself and through the questions from Bethany um, on st story sharing of Toastmasters journey, I think I really need to do my first icebreaker in Pathways to tell my story where am I before Toastmasters, what did I do before, <laughs> And as well as what am I able to do from now on? And uh, I really do appreciate Lori Whitmore to um, to gave her her first icebreaker speech after so many tenth uh, company communicate their uh, manual speeches, and uh, for which I think that would be my number one uh, goal this year is to begin my first icebreaker speech in the pathways and to tell my own story that I never told before. So thank you, Bethany, for sharing and inspiring me to advance more. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. All right, my next table topic is for Bethany. Your most memorable moment. My most memorable moment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, since we're on the theme of risk taking, I will share a little bit of my memorable moment. Imagine, if you will, I was turning somewhere over the age of 20, and I told my newly married husband that I wanted to go skydiving. Oh, yeah. Oh. Jumping out of a plane and going skydiving. I was so excited. He wasn't. <laughs> but he agreed. <laughs> for my birthday that he would please me in this way and he drove me to the skydiving place. And I was so excited. But one thing you may not know about me is I am hearing I am hearing impaired. I actually do not even have an eardrum in my left ear. I have a hole in my ear. I have severe vision loss. I'm technically legally blind. Um, I have one arm that's shorter than my other, so this one's always been like that ever since birth. Oh, yeah, and I have a pacemaker, cardio issues. So me going skydiving to him was just like I was out of my mind, and I might have been. So I show up to the skydiving place. They took a look at me and go, <laughs> oh, you're serious? I said, yes, I am ready to go. I can go by myself. I don't need to go tandem. And they said, yeah, you're going tandem. I said, okay. So we get on the plane, I'm so excited. I had to take my hearing aids out. I couldn't wear any kind of glasses. I was going deaf and blind with an amazing hunk guy riding behind me. He said, we got it down. So he said, one, two, we had such an amazing ride down. It was amazing, but the guy on my back was going. And I was like, what is going on? Dude, you've done this like 20 times. So he finally get down to the ground. He hands me my hearing aids. He hands me my glasses. He's like, did you have fun? I said, yeah, that was awesome. And he goes, I've been doing this for 20 years. And you were the only psychotic person to ever go on count two instead of three. I said, thank you. So that was by far <laughs> my most memorable risk-taking moment. Back to you, Miss Topic Master. Thank you, Bethany. <laughs> right. My next table topic. What would you classify as your priorities when risk taking? Lori? Hmm. My priorities for risk taking? I don't think I <laughs> understand. Like <clears throat> going forward, how would I approach risk taking? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. Mm, I don't know how to make that go away. Uh, my priorities for risk taking. I think that my two quotes I shared earlier are the ones that inspire me 
what I'd like to share with you is my most memorable moment in my risk taking. I had an opportunity in about 20 years ago to do a leadership seminar and preparing for the seminar, it was a seminar that took place over three months and preparing for the seminar, we had to fill out an application and the application was asking us, where have we taken the biggest risks in our life? Our five biggest risks. And then other questions in the application later on asked, what are your greatest achievements in your life? And I never noticed it until I filled out that application that every one of my risks led to one of my greatest achievements. There was a connection between what I had identified as my five greatest achievements. They were one-to-one -one lining up with my five biggest risks. That was an aha moment for me to notice that, okay, risk taking has this huge benefit of leading to achievements, like big achievements, things that really, really matter. And so it's part of my DNA. Risk taking is part of my DNA. And when I'm, I'm faced with the opportunity to, to take that risk, I go for it. However, there's one caveat. My husband is a bigger risk taker than I am. He is the thrill seeker. So I'm not, I'm not going to be jumping out of an airplane. I am not even going to be, you know, doing bungee jumping or anything like that. Though I have done hot air balloon and uh, whitewater rafting. That's my limit. Madam Topics Master. Thank you, Nori. <laughs> so do we have time for any more topics, Dawn? No, I think that's it. Thank you so much, Patricia. That was Everyone got covered. Yes. All right. I'll pass control back to you. Thank you so much for a wonderful risk-taking table topics. And at this time, I'm going to turn the meeting over to our general evaluator who will lead us in our evaluation portion of the meeting. Our general evaluator is Pamela Landers. Please help me. And Don, I have a question. Is yeah. we're all evaluating Lori. We don't have a specific evaluator for Lori or Tim is doing Lori's evaluation. Then we're going to do a round robin. Right? What's happening? Tim is going to do the verbal evaluation Then we're doing a round robin. Yes, that sounds great. If, okay. Tim is, if Tim is ready and willing to do that. Yeah. Yes. No. No, he's not. <laughs> what, what is a round robin? <laughs> no, are you, are you going to evaluate Lori? You're going to do a verbal evaluation on Lori, right? Yes, I can do yes. that then. Okay. And How then I'll lead, the, I'll lead the round robin. Don't, you don't have to worry about that. I just want to know what... It's a group evaluation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I would like now to have Tim evaluate our speaker, Lori. Tim, you're on. Lori, hi, how are you doing? Good. Good, this is my first time I'm meeting you. Uh, and uh, I want to say congratulations to give your first icebreaker or, or multiple icebreakers. And uh, this may be a different version of you sharing uh, your story with us. I do really appreciate uh, that you have a wonderful touching story. And I just want to say congratulations all from the start. You actually did a very great job um, presenting uh, your speech uh, online, especially that you have your gestures, you have your facial expressions. And also your computer is actually sitting in front of you because not many people would notice that when presenting the, um, your eyes to go directly in front of the video camera uh, instead of sideways or there. So it's a technique that you must have learned somehow and you were well, well prepared mm -hmm. to give your, first, your, your speech on video online and live with us. So congratulations all from the start. What I like about your speech is also that you, uh, you were inspired by your father and you were inspired by your father's actions and uh, his values that without anything then uh, that can be 
you can be much powerful then um, because you were you know, surviving with the Holocaust and your whole story. I can really, really sense that you tell us your whole story with us then. Uh, your story involves with your life around uh, first part, your marriage, as well as your remarriage. And you entailed your quote with your father back again. And so I love about that how you pulled your father's quote again back with us to tell that not just only that, that, but you have to embrace change. You also have to make another place with you as well. What, what I can help you to uh, become better with uh, a different version uh, of, of the icebreaker is that I believe that your story is well true enough and your value tell us about your, uh, your life experience and your whole motivation. What you can also give a little bit and maybe perhaps is that to tell us a little bit story about how you had uh, challenges that came up throughout your whole journey and what you actually overturned and do about it then. That tell us from a risk taker from the start, from marrying at 23, to the challenges of uh, how to overturn your becoming a more risk averse, a risk sharing um, between um, how you became uh, a more powerful woman and how you overcome those type of challenges, mm -hmm. that can really inspire you to help us become a much more powerful individual uh, and to tell us more about you, how you overcame those challenges. So overall, I believe your, your challenges and your great story entice us to inspire us to go forward. And with a little bit of, uh, ch of challenges to help us, I believe your story will inspire us even more than thank you so much, Lori. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for your evaluation. I appreciate it. Okay, now we're going to do uh, open evaluations. Everybody can share one point, something you liked. Then we'll go back and do one thing that you might suggest for improvement. So we'll start with you, Don. And Bethany, you'll be next. Thank you, Pamela. My favorite thing about Lori's speech was, again, to re reiterate what Tim was saying, it was I enjoyed learning about your father through your speech and the, your, the quotes that kind of carried you and transferred, you know, kind of given, given us a lift to take those risks. I'd actually like to see those quotes written out so we can use them in the future for our club. I think they were very profound and that was my favorite thing about your speech and I'm glad that you shared that. Uh, back to you, Thank Pamela. You, Don, Bethany. Are you trying to find your unmute button? Can you unmute her, Don? There we go. <laughs> I was gonna commend you on being vulnerable because a lot of Toastmasters today, at least speeches that I hear, they're willing to share, hey, this is a risk that I take and look what I did, you know, and you share vulnerably about your marriage and just the struggles that you went through with that. I just wanted to commend you because I think that was an awesome um, place to go with your speech and thank you for just being you and transparent. I appreciated that a lot. Trisha, Patricia. What I loved about Laurie's speech, I absolutely loved the way it was so moving. It was extremely gripping. And I loved the way that you brought, Laurie, that you brought us on a journey. The quotes I felt were absolutely breathtaking. And like what Dawn said, I would, I would love to see them in print. So well done. Thank you. And Aaron? I only hear Laurie's second half, and I feel very, very, very shocked with so much marriage. And I only realized that I was like, okay, I may only go for one. And that was really um, in depth and also a very great twist to me. I mean, like, to, I mean, you have challenged yourself and you make a great decision. And that was a nice risk and authentic there. Uh, I love the vibe. Back to you, family. Great, thank you. And Alex. 
can I make a comment for Sekapatu? Something that you liked about, something that Lori did well in her speech delivery. I, I think I don't know if it's really talking because I can use it something that I can get the like image that I can follow up and it's easy for me to understand. Um, I can feel like what, what, I think, I also I like the quote, that for, that she used the quote as a conclusion as a, as a quote for the end, which is the, the thing I really love. And it's kind of like, a, kind of like a, it's something that we can take away. I think it is good. Great, thank you, Alex. And Lori, my feedback for you on what you did well is that you shared the experience that started, at least for us, uh, you opening to self-sufficiency and being a powerful woman, like leaving the marriage was a huge shift. And so you gave us lots of information and support for how that was an important piece of changing your life to go into a way that you're really really uh, powerful in your womanhood <clears throat> and so thank you for that and alex could you mute yourself please alex yeah thank you all right now i'm going to ask you for a suggestion for improvement so don did you want something else in addition to sharing the quotes and writing uh no i think that was it thank you okay bethany did you have a suggestion for improvement yeah no i was gonna say because i've noticed that a bunch of other people mentioned this as well it seems like the quotes have really resonated with a lot of people so you might consider mentioning that maybe at the beginning to get people's attention and then weave those throughout your speech. Cause as soon as we get your attention, we're there with you, we're in there. So um, just an idea. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. I personally think the, the gestures, um, I, I rather focus on gestures because uh, I noticed most of her speech is actually much more of like very pause, um, professional standard. Um, style. I would love to actually have some gestures, hand gestures or facial expressions that actually enlighten it. Uh, that will actually make it more uh, having a lasting impression on that, that, that if that makes sense. Thank yes. You Thank you. And Patricia? Seconds. Well, for me, I think I would love to see it's like the facial expressions. Also, what I would love is the quotes to so have to maybe on a if they were visible or something like that but overall i felt absolutely super thank you and alex any suggestion for improvement well, i think i have some i have some suggestions for the table topic like for example like the, when the table has method ask a question the speaker has to answer the question directly and then show by the by the by a given a supporting idea and, and also in the end like, the speaker has to give have to make a conclusion up like tell the audience like well, or something they can take that they can take it but uh, what i found out is like when they when they ask when, they, when the people ask speaker ask the question like the people you the speaker you can like repeat a question which, which is not necessary so i so this i think like the like, this is the thing i wish to, to be cautious Okay, thank you. I was asking for feedback about Lori's speech, but thank you for that. Okay, and Lori, when, one of the things that happens for me with you on the receiving end is that sometimes you're looking at the camera, but sometimes your eyes are darting off to the side and you're looking at other things, and I lose you when that happens. I'm not saying you need to constantly stare at the camera, but more focus with the camera than not. That would be helpful for me to track you and stay with you because your eyes do tend to, and I know you're so used to speaking to a room of people where you have to look around, but it's not helpful here to do that. So I really appreciate you getting more, keeping your eyes more focused and directly on in the camera lens. All right. Thank you very much for your feedback, everyone. Thank you.
And Tim, you did a great job at giving Lori feedback and giving her what she did well and what she could improve. I'm a little, I have a question about your suggestions of improvement. It feels like it, we have a five to seven minute speech time. It's a lot to ask to add content to a speech that's more than maybe one point. And it felt like uh, you were asking her to take a whole, at least this was my interpretation, so this is what I'm asking, to add like what she did more tangibly, I think this is what you said, in order to d express her powerful woman to give us more examples of stuff. I just was wondering if I interpreted that, that right. I think there's room to have incorporated that. So, I I okay. Back. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, the, right. the, yeah, I, I think uh, it, the, the evaluation is is uh, personal feedback, um, but to me, it it sounds that uh, Lori did a wonderful job, and uh, if she can um, slide in a little bit of some little bit pieces of points instead of just someone saying oh i had challenges and i and i just dealt with it then just as a result just as a progress a little bit a little bit a little bit by little bit uh, give us a little bit of hint then this is possible to make it more full <laughs> right okay i agree yes thank you for sharing that so good that was a great suggestion for improvement all right thank you so we didn't have a grammarian today can we get a timers report, Alex? Did everybody qualify on table topics? Uh, for, for, for table topic, only Lori is going to have a type. The others are qualified. OK, and the speakers, did they stay within their time? Uh, for the first speaker, it's seven minutes and 56. 15 seconds. The second six, six minutes, six minutes, and 53 seconds. Great. Okay. So they both stayed within their time. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate that. All right. That's the, and so it's for the meeting today, the only suggestion that I had was, um, I was a little bit unclear about the timer for the table topics because I noticed Alex with Aaron was going on more than it felt like more than two minutes. And so I just didn't know what was happening. I couldn't see anything really obvious. So that was the only thing, everything else we did. We, with our missing five of our regular members, we covered everything that needed to be covered, except we didn't have a grammarian and that was fine. And the opening instructions are always really helpful, Don, when you share that slide and then read the a mission for the club so that we start off on a really positive, note i liked i like the process online we talked about this a little bit last week of asking the person first at calling their name before you ask the question for table topics so that they can unmute and be prepared to respond and so there's not a lag in timing of that jim pointed that out last week um that he had been trained so well to ask the question and then call on somebody, but online it's a little bit different. So I like that we're calling on somebody and then asking the question so that it can, and you can, as a participant, say whether or not you, you know, you can on your own, your own internal place, answer the question that's being asked to somebody else if you want to, um, which is the whole purpose of asking the question to the whole group. So I like the smoothness of that way better of asking the person first and then asking the question. Oh, that's my report for today, Madam Toastmaster Don. back to you. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you everyone for a great meeting. And I um, will let our guests know if you're interested in joining, I put the, the membership link right up there and I'd love to have you come back again and to participate. But I'd love to know today, right now, I know this is your first, for some of you, I know Alex and Tim, this is your first online meeting. Uh, Tim, I'd love to know, how did you enjoy it? What did you like about it? 
what are your first thoughts? Hello. Hi. <laughs> yes, uh, this is actually my first online Toastmasters meeting. And uh, thank you for assigning me uh, a role on the spot. This is actually my first online evaluation <laughs> as well. Um, so I need, I still need to get used to with the video and also that because I'm used to be talking to a bunch of about 200 people in training. <laughs> um, but it's, it's definitely a great challenge um, to take upon this role, especially to evaluate um, a colleague, Lori Woodmore, as a distinguished Toastmaster as well, um, both as well. And uh, I, I love about this online meeting. I think uh, um, the SA, especially Don, I think you gave the rules uh, very, very clearly. And uh, this is very different type of meeting. Um, and this is my first time hearing a round, round robin. So um, as to Pamela, um, that mentioned about round robin, I was kind of surprised as to what it is. So I'm kind of curious what it was. <laughs> yeah. So overall, I think it's a great job. This meeting is a wonderful success. So thank you for having me here. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. That was wonderful. And Alex, I would love to also hear from you. I will go ahead and unmute. Oh, you got it. Super. So how did you enjoy the meeting? Uh, first, of, first of all, I have to apologize that uh, I didn't do a great job for the timing because all the speakers are so far behind. Sometimes I forget I'm the time. So that's why I can't answer the focus. So this is the part I have to apologize for. But I think I have a great time for the meeting because the every speaker is doing a great job. They share the information that I mainly learn a lot from it. So I think also it's my first time to join the online meeting. I think I have learned a lot from all of you guys there. Wonderful. Wonderful. And, and I will tell you, Alex, for the next time, I mean, it really does help a lot when you have either just a, you know, the uh, earphones or the headset. It makes a huge difference in the quality for us to hear you more so than even for you to hear us. So just to keep that in mind, when you join, you know, participate in another online meeting, it will make a huge difference. So, but thank you so much. And I think you did a great job. I think we were a good team. I had my stuff here. And as soon as I saw you put them in, on the chat box, I was ready. So that was super. And Bethany, thanks. Thanks for coming. And how did you enjoy our meeting? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I know you're an experienced online presenter and club member. So what, what were your thoughts about our meeting? Well, I enjoyed it tremendously. And this is the first meeting I've been able to attend in the middle of the day. So I'm like wide awake, which is scary if you think about it. Um, but you know, you guys have such a welcoming community here and I can totally see you guys growing. So I enjoyed it. So thank you for inviting me. And maybe I'll pop in again sometime. Yay, wonderful. I'm so glad. I'm glad that it was able, you were able to participate and join us. And I know you have little kids coming home for the summer. That's the same here. Mine are bigger now. So <laughs> have fun with that. <laughs> have fun with that. Uh, anyone else want to just share a thought before we go to the agenda on what, you know, the meeting today, Lori, you haven't been here for, you know, a while. I know. I missed the club so much. I've been busy with pathways trainings for the last three weeks. And I have all those completed now to uh, earn my second DTM. Yay! I should complete either in June or July. Well, I wanted to share one thing. In my other advanced club, which is an in-person club, we had a panel last night of district international contest winners. And we gave short speeches and they gave us feedback. And one takeaway that I wanted to share, which is related to Pamela's comment about Tim's evaluation. What I learned was make every word count, mm. every word in our speech. So where Tim's made a suggestion for me to share more, a little bit more about the challenges I faced and how I overcame them, that means in order to fit in the five to seven minutes, take something else out, but make every word count so that it's purposeful and 
has that invaluable message. And I think that's something that we can all learn, uh, improve upon in our speeches. So I, I wanted to share that tip, make every word count. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I agree. <laughs> uh, wonderful. And I've got your, I've, I've copied your quotes. So you may see those again in some kind of, you know, social context. And if there's any, just to, to invite everybody, if there was something that you took from this meeting about risk taking, being an out of the box leader, uh, any kind of quote or anything that you want to extract and would like to either uh, share a social image or use as a club for, you know, for reaching out to new members. Uh, just, you can either create that video or create the image yourself or share the quote. I can create it, uh, but it always will help create the energy and hopefully we can reach more people like Tim and Alex who came here because they saw something on Facebook that invited them here. So that's what we're, that's that social piece. And you'll, I'm hoping Tim and Alex, I'd love to connect with you again and maybe get your email so you can be on our, at least our invitation list. So if you'd like to put those in here, at this time, I'm going to stop the recording. You can put your emails in the chat box. I'm gonna stop the recording.